If you're building an airplane, then you know how exciting it is to get to the point where you need an engine. Well, this one's mine, and it's about to get a complete inspection and a new top end. And of course, a first start. So back here in Loosedale, Mississippi, here at South Mississippi Light Aircraft, my engine's back on the stand here. Um, came out here to do an inspection, make sure everything is everything, and uh, come to find out, um, I had a big board kit on it, and which is fine, but decided I want to go back to stock. So I've got a brand new set of cylinders and pistons over here that we're gonna put on this, and build this up and put it back in service. <laughs> This piston put it over there, then the pin would be going the other way. Yeah. Then you flip it over, then it would be right. All right, so moving right along, we've got the uh, pistons and cylinders onto the case. And a little key point on this, this is the, the newer style case. And it has, um, the bolts are a little bit different, the thread rod here. So left is long. The rule of that is left is long. So these thread rods here, the, uh, the bolts are just a little bit longer on the left. Next, heads. up and catch it with this hand here as you go up before you go in too far right you have to just as you pass, as you get past the fins then reach there and shove that up on the tube okay. on both of them and shove them back against the stock on the tube just kind of loose it just kind of sit there yep just shove them back up there okay because this is a this is a critical point in here, and it's very easy to get damage those. So now, what you want to do now, hold your hand under the tubes here, and make sure that when, as you push up, you'll hear this, hear this bottom out as it goes up on it. Here, tap metal. Now you're going to be pushing up against, depending on where my cam is. Half, the whole half turn. Half, half turn, half. Yeah. You just set it up there and lay it down now. Now reach there real gently and work the cylinder back. Yeah. All right, now this is supposed to be. Yeah, it'll vibrate and beat. And that's pretty tight now. You'll have to get on it. Pull it on down and... All right. <coughs> All right, so we've got the uh, heads on just just started. And one of the key little, little tips and tricks on that is the O-rings you install on the push rod tubes. You want to go past the fins so you don't scratch them up and put a slice into them. And then you can put your O-rings on. And then we bring up the, uh, the cylinders to the heads first, because that's where they, that's the most important part to mount is those, those two, and then draw it in together. So what's the next step here, Ronnie? All right, now we, we're putting a lineup plate on, so we want to massage these cylinders out so that we maintain that gap in here so my valve coverage and stuff don't hit. And then we'll bring these up to a, 90 inch pounds, 89 inch pounds of torque. Hear that click, click. So, so there is a, so <laughs> click, there is, click, <laughs> click, click. On the right 
correct torque wrench that has the click click, you will hear it click click. If you don't have that type of torque wrench, the click click might be a bad thing. Yeah. You just, just, but they, they, there's a set procedure that they, they need to come up to at that point in time. So there's still enough play within these cylinders that if yep. you don't have an alignment tool, you can draw them up too close together. Well, they can draw up too close together and they can be pitched off and cause the, the intake plane here not to be parallel with itself. Okay. So when the intake manifold bounce on, uh, this is to line it up so that it sets down correctly. Okay. So all the heads are torqued down to spec and we're done with the, the bottom end. We're going to go on to the coolant hoses next. This is awesome. So I'm going to save you some time. I'm going to introduce to you the best tool ever made for <laughs> removing hose clamps on, uh, on water coolant lines here. Check this out. Are right, you going to showcase this here? Let's see if we can get it. Push this together. It locks. Slide it off. Okay, to skip ahead uh, just a little bit, we got the uh, intake manifolds put on and just kind of uh, order of sequence here. When you bolt these in, just to go around basically and um, tighten up the bolts kind of evenly just by, by hand. When you're going to torque it down, you're going to start with the outside first and then the upper so that it's, uh, the way it pulls it in there, pulls it in evenly. So a little tip there. Got new spark plugs put in it and put the boots back on and left the uh, numbering system up so we don't get confused on that. So we got uh, number two and number four on this side, of course, and one and three on the other side. And from here, a couple of little, little things to add on and almost done. All right, little update. So this is pretty much ready to go. Last order of business was putting on the, uh, the carburetors. Uh, they're installed now. Um, we got the, the, bar, the bottom spark plugs torqued to spec and the spark plug ignition wire connected. We're leaving the top undone for what reason? So we can prime the oil system, turn the engine over, okay. prime it. So we're going to take the spark plugs back out, which are just loosely in there now. So we don't put them in tight. So there's no there. compression. So we're going to crank it over, right. achieve a good oil pressure uh, before we do our initial That's start, and, yep. then, and then put it back together there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next uh, update, we're going to put this on an engine stand and, and break this thing in. Cool. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. Airtech Coatings at AirtechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, and so much more. Fast forward just a little bit here. We're out here in the uh, the shop, and we are ready to do the first start of this engine. So uh, mount to the engine stand. Everything's connected. We're going to run it without the two uh, the spark plugs on top um, out of it right now, so we get some oil pressure going. And then after we confirm oil pressure, we'll connect those and do the first start. So what we're going to do now is we're going to spin it over. Normally we'd take 
and do the proper purge procedure that's in the flyrotex.com in the video section where you can go to where you can actually see how to do a proper oil purge. But on our test stand here, we're under expert supervision to where we, we've done this a number of times and we understand what, we're, what we have. And we're very cautious about what we're doing here. So this is sort of out of the normal of what we're fixing to do. Make sure your throttle is all the way back for any of these procedures that you're doing. Make sure that safety is at the utmost concern. We don't have any, don't have a prop on it. We don't have anybody standing by anything that can get wrapped up. So here we go. And I don't want to take and spend, spend it over at a long period of time. I want to do five to six second burst. Watching our oil pressure here. Okay, now we'll put the plugs in. All right, so we're fixing to do the first initial startup without a prop, and this is not a Rotex method that needs to be done. But being as we're in an environment that we do this all the time, we understand what we have to do. We make sure that our throttle is all the way out. One thing that I do recommend on any aircraft that you're starting for the first time is leave the air filters off. One reason I like to leave the air filters off is if we have a problem with our ignition system that we cannot kill the system, kill the engine through our ignition system, then we can take, cover our carburetors up and kill the engine in a reasonable fashion. Otherwise, it may run for a while and get into a dangerous situation. So I'd rather leave the air filters off to begin with. Now let's see if this thing will fire up. Throttle closed, ignition hot. Put a prop on. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> so now we've ran, we've started the engine up. What we need to do before we start our test run is to verify our oil level. So we want to pull our oil out here and we see that we're extremely low. Explain this trick here. I've never seen this before. Maybe other people have, but what do you do here with the paper towel? So a clean paper towel, oil is real clear on our dipstick and you can't see it. So what we're gonna do is we'll pull the dipstick out, we'll lay it on the paper towel, move it over, and where the oil is on the paper towel is where our level is on the stick. Great trick. So I was taught that by my father. To verify our oil level, so we want to burp our engine. Uh, I think we call that the uh, the Rotax gurgle, the Rotax burp. What is the uh... burping the engine? We haven't gained much oil, but so we're still low. So we will add oil. We're going to add the oil, tie the engine down, secure it, and then we're going to break the engine in. So Ronnie, what are we looking for during this part of the uh, the break-in or run-up? Well, we're looking to hopefully not find any leaks. Everything runs out according to the way it should. Carburetors are good. Uh, everything runs out very good. We want to 
when it seems worth from 30 to 40 minutes somewhere long in there to break these new rings and stuff in new piston and rings in yeah so in case I didn't mention it before I'm bringing this completely back to stock so I've got actually a brand new set of uh, cylinders and pistons in here zero time so this is literally the first minutes and and hours if you will being put on these pistons and cylinders they're they're brand new zero time so we're gonna break this in right now this engine running right now. So you hear him pumping the throttle a little bit. The reason he's doing that, again, these cylinders and pistons, rings are all brand new zero time. So he's pumping the throttle to load up the pistons, uh, the rings inside the pistons there to the cylinder walls. I'll do that a few more times during the process of breaking in. Shut it down one time, just for a brief second to check it over. So far, zero leaks, uh, no water, no oil, nothing. Everything's going good so far. Right now, he's running about 4,000 RPM, keeping the revs up, breaking those rings. So we had a good, uh, well, roughly 24 hours together here. I uh, came earlier, um, well, a week or two ago for their, their Rotax class, service class, just to see what it's about. Um, learned a whole lot and then was encouraged by what I learned there to do some of what we did here today. So what did we do? We replaced the cylinders and pistons. Well, we started with to totally disassemble the engine completely because we wanted to see what the bottom end looked like. Check it out. And so I split the case done all that, serviced all that, checked all the sprag plugs, checked all the other stuff and then assembled that back together. Then we got all the head cylinders and stuff prepped, ready to install. Then we went through the heads, serviced the heads, cleaned them up, the valves and everything. Went all the way, just basically went completely through the engine so we'd know exactly what we had in this engine. Now guys, when you do get a used engine, um, I would recommend it, they would recommend to simply not just bolt it up to your airplane, actually have it inspected because you might find a few things, and we did. One of the things we found out and determined I want to talk about just for a second is in the gearbox. Uh, the previous owner was running like an 84-inch Kato. Nothing against Kato, but it's a really big prop. It's a heavy prop, heavy, and there's something heavy about inertia prop. heavy inertia prop. Yeah. And what does that do to the dogs of the gearbox? That really chews up the gearbox, especially when they bring it down at low RPM. Okay. It beats them, just chews them up. It had galled it. It, it, it actually uh, destroyed the phenolic washer shim washer in the engine that, that was totally gone out of it when we pulled it apart so to avoid that you want to run the right size prop for your yeah. your engine and also 
to help avoid that. That could have been avoided if they would have shimmed it correctly over time or? Well, no, or it, 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 it's just that props hard on the gearboxes and we've noted that through the years, pull those gearboxes down that's run that heavy prop and that's what we normally see. Now, one thing that needs to be done at every annual inspection is a friction torque that a lot of AMPs that have not had proper training don't understand how to do. Or skip out it altogether. Or skip it altogether. So yep. if you do that at annual inspections, they, you would have saw that this gearbox had been deteriorated because of the prop. Okay, so one little note to self, everybody, and uh, these engines Rotax, they're, they're a light engine. There's not much meat to it, even flywheel. The prop is kind of the flywheel on these engines, correct? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can't have you can't overprop an engine, especially these engines. Now, on flyrotex.com and technical documentation, you can find where to do the inertia weight analysis on your particular prop. Okay, but otherwise it's been a great experience here. These guys found uh, a couple different things that we had to uh, fix or replace, um, which is obviously the most important thing is about being safe. So this engine right. is now safe. First and foremost, signed, signed off in the logbook, all signed off, and you ready to rock and roll with I'm ready to rock and roll. So I'm <laughs> super excited because I finally have a viable engine to hang on the front of my airplane after all these years. And I saw it run for the first time here, and we went through all the paces, went uh, full break-in. Full break-in. What you'll see in the video um, somewhere here that he's kind of pumping the throttle, and that is to accomplish what again? That's to make the rings, press them out, make them seat in properly. Okay. So yeah. it's time to go fly. That's good, let's do it.